Today we're going to study the railroads and the impact that the railroads had on the development and economic growth of Polk County and Central Florida and the state. The railroads are very, very important because they were the way and they still are the way of getting products from one place to another. And they played a very important role in the growth of Polk County. So today we're going to study the railroad and the impact that it made. Molly, what is your question? When did the railroads come to Florida? The sound of steam engines echoing through the pine forests of Florida evokes romantic images of our frontier past. But the earliest Florida transportation only included horseback, oxen, and wagons and ships. For many years, steamboats controlled the destiny of much of Florida. If you did not live along the coast or along a navigable river, you were living in isolation. Florida developed some of the earliest railroads in the nation. The first train to operate in Florida was at the Apalachicola River on the Panhandle in 1836. Our earliest railroads were short rails. They reached rural communities and provided necessary rail transportation for sawmills, turpentine camps, and agriculture. The early steam locomotive was thought of as concentrating the pulling power of many horses into one entity, and thus rated by degree of horsepower. They were called the Iron Horse. The turbulent years of the Civil War and Reconstruction in Florida delayed the development of major railroads and much progress in Florida. For Florida's future, in a land that was very difficult to travel across, trains would be the easiest way to move large loads of passengers and goods quickly and efficiently from one place to another. The construction of major railroads in Florida helped to establish new towns and cities. Trains connected distant areas of the state and were integral parts of Florida's expanding industries such as citrus, lumber, turpentine, phosphate, and tourism. Railroads built America many ways. Standard time and the four time zones we now know today were set in place by the nation's railroads in 1883. Railroad time soon took hold across the country. If you wanted to travel, you needed to be on the railroad time. Jane, what is your question? Who built the railroads? A person who reached prominence and wealth in a particular industry was often referred to as a tycoon, mogul, magnet, or baron. In Florida, the railroads were the result of investment by wealthy northern industrialists. In 1881, Hamilton Disson of Philadelphia purchased four million acres from the Kissimmee Valley to the Everglades for 25 cents an acre. The Disson purchase stimulated the interest of railroad builders by making vast amounts of land available in Central and South Florida. The greatest development was due to two major railroad barons, Henry B. Plant of Connecticut on the Gulf Coast and Henry F. Flagler of New York on the Atlantic Coast. Henry Plant bought several short lines connected to steamboats on the St. Johns River which eventually were consolidated into the most prominent railroad companies serving our section of Florida. Percy, your question. Do you know where the railroad stopped in Polk County? Before the railroad, most people in Polk lived near Bartow, Fort Meade, and Homeland, or the Sorkum area. Henry Plant changed everything by purchasing the South Florida Railroad in 1883 and building a railroad from Kissimmee across Polk to Tampa. Rail construction began on both ends in Tampa and Kissimmee with over 1,500 men at work in August of 1883. More than 250 workers lived in a camp on Lake Wire. By the end of October 1883, only a 13-mile gap in Polk County remained to be completed. 
The project was delayed in November due to heavy cuts at Lake Alfred and Fort Cummings where over 216,000 yards of sand and clay were removed from the highlands of Polk County. On November 20th, 1883, a record was set in the south when 100 hands laid 11,200 feet of track in a single day west of Horse Creek, which is near the town of Davenport. Finally, on January 22nd, 1882, the last spike was hammered down at Clinch Bay near Saddle Creek, about five miles east of Lakeland. Maps at the Polk County Historical Library reveal seven new communities formed in Polk County in 1884. Lofman, Davenport, Haines City, Lake Alfred, Auburndale, Lakeland, and Winston. In 1884, construction of the Bartow Branch began, which was completed by January 1st, 1885, bringing the first train to Bartow. This branch began at the Bartow Junction, which is the present day Lake Alfred, passing through Winter Haven, Eagle Lake, and Gordonville before reaching the terminus at Bartow. This branch crossed some of the finest citrus growing land in the state. The second line in Polk, the Florida Southern Railway, extended from Pemberton Ferry in Sumter County west to Bushnell to Lakeland in the summer of 1885, crossing the South Florida Railroad line and reaching Bartow in 1886. Highland City, once called Haskell, was the only stop between the two larger cities in Polk. From Bartow, the line was completed to Charlotte Harbor in July 1886. Polk now had east, west, and south and north lines. The South Florida Railway Company was acquired by the Savannah, Florida, and Western Railway in 1892. After the death of Henry Plant in 1902, these railroads were absorbed into the Atlantic Coastline Railroad. The Atlantic Coastline Railroad extended from Haines City to Lake Wales in 1911. The original Atlantic Coastline Depot, a crude, unpainted shack and platform, was the first building constructed in Lake Wales. In 1913, the Seaboard Airline Railway, a competitor of the Atlantic Coastline, extended its track into Polk from Tampa to Bartow and on to Alturas, reaching Lake Wales in 1915. In April 1915, the first train over the Lake Wales section of the east-west seaboard airline tracks came through from Bartow. The last rails laid in Polk were by the Seaboard Airline Railway in 1927. In November 1925, the Seaboard Airline Railroad established a fine seasonal first-class passenger train with Pullman car sleepers, the Orange Blossom Special, to capitalize on the booming land sales that were taking place in Florida. With the addition of fast, luxurious train travel, they could lure influential business leaders to the Sunshine State. The Orange Blossom Special quickly became celebrated as a way to travel between New York City and Florida. It was during the maiden run of the Orange Blossom Special that Irvin T. Rouse and Chubby Wise were inspired to write the Orange Blossom Special as a fiddle tune. It has been called the best known fiddle tune of the 20th century. In 1968, the Atlantic Coast Line merged with the Seaboard Airline Railway, becoming the Seaboard Coast Line. Today, they are all part of the CSX Railroad. Lauren, your question. How did trains affect the lives of the people in Polk County? With the 1884 completion of our first major railroad, everything began to change. People could now travel quickly from Jacksonville to the Florida West Coast. Soon the towns and villages of the early pioneers no longer were dotted with log shacks, but beautiful homes and paved roads. By the mid-century, equal to the size of the state of Delaware, Polk County had become the heart of Florida politics and the state's economy. The first commercial shipment of phosphate rock 
for the fertilizer left the area in 1888, marking the birth of a new industry. In the 19th century, the railroads became our first big business and our largest single employer in the United States. Railroad workers ranged from unskilled freight handlers to locomotive engineers to those who built and repaired the rolling stock. The work was extremely difficult and the pay was low. Railroad employment peaked in the 1920s and then dropped as railroads succumbed to the competition of cars, buses, trucks, and airplanes. Meanwhile, railroad companies adopted diesel locomotives, track lane machinery, and other innovations that cut their labor force. The era of frequent rail travel in Florida had already ended by the 1960s. Today, Polk Railroad history is all around us. Recreational trails occupy old rail lines. The Fort Fraser Trail follows the bed of the South Florida Railway from Lakeland to Bartow. The General James Van Fleet State Trail follows a section of abandoned seaboard airline rail. Historic railroad depots dot the county. Auburndale, originally built by the SAL in 1927, is used in a local park as a community center. Dundee, originally built by the ACL in 1912, is used as a museum. Frostproof, originally built by the ACL in 1912, is used as a chamber of commerce. Haines City, originally built by the ACL in 1923, is used as a business. Fort Meade, originally built by the ACL in 1911, is used as a business. Mulberry, originally built by the SAL, is home of the Phosphate Museum. Lake Wales, the former ACL and SAL passenger depots, served as a museum. Lily, what is your question? Do you have a book for me to read? Sandra W. Sammons, The Two Henrys, Henry Plant and Henry Flagler and their railroads. This dual biography chronicles the histories of two entrepreneurs who through the cultivation of hotels and railroads helped the Florida wilderness evolve into modern Florida. The book is part of Pineapple Press's Young Reader series, targeted at readers age 12 and older. It offers a bevy of supplemental information for young historians and back sections include a selected chronology of railroad history, a glossary, an index, and a list of references. The simplicity of this book should make it a good source of material for history reports.